Just this past month, physicists at Imperial College London announced that they had been able to carry out the famous double slit experiment using slits in time rather than slits in space. Well, what on earth does that sentence even mean? This experiment, other than being cool to a optical physicist, someone who likes studying light, also confirmed that behaviours in time and space are correlated and has actually resulted in an advance in our understanding that may help us one day make computers and bits out of beams of light rather than out of electrons and silicon. Computers made out of light, slits in time, sort of feels like someone's put a physics textbook in a blender. What is going on here? Let's take a dive into this kind of strange experiment. Okay, I want to start with a quick crash course on the regular double slit experiment, then I will run through how this research team conducted their experiment in time rather than in space, which already sounds trippy and confusing. The first now classic double slit experiment was originally proposed in 1801 by British scientist Thomas Young while he was exploring the wave-like nature of light. As a light was shone onto a card which had two slits cut into it, the waves of light propagated through the slits and when they reached the screen at the far end, they produced an interference pattern of bright and dark bands. Where two peaks in the wavelength of light overlap, you get bright spots, constructive interference. If a peak of one wave overlaps with a trough of another wave, however, you get no wave at all, which is called deconstructive interference. This was actually one of the observations that confirmed to us that light isn't as simple as just a particle, which would have otherwise produced just two bright bands on the screen. Instead, it must be more like a wave. To do this experiment well, the slits need to be very, very, very narrow so they are point-like in nature. Otherwise, each slit acts like multiple sources of light in a little row. This, for the time being, is all we need to know to conduct this experiment in space. Let's now look at how we would conduct it in time. To perform this experiment in time rather than in space, Sapienza, the lead researcher behind this project, and his colleagues wouldn't be looking at wavelengths, but instead would be looking at frequencies. The same way all colours have a wavelength, that wavelength has a corresponding frequency. Short wavelengths have high frequencies, and long wavelengths have low frequencies. Essentially, frequency is the time analogue of a wavelength. To measure a time-based double-slit experiment, the research team needed to build an experimental setup capable of creating slits in time for the light to pass through. And the good news there is that that sounds much more complicated than it actually is. Sapienza and his team used a material called indium tin oxide, ITO, which is the transparent material that makes your phone's touchscreen work. It also has an interesting property that it transitions from transparent, essentially like a glass, to reflective, like a mirror, in response to certain wavelengths of light, in a process called the Kerr effect. The research team used this reflective switching property as a way to redirect the beam of light for very short periods of time. This is the slit, or window, in time through which light can pass and be redirected. To actually do this experiment, the researchers used a really common experimental approach in optical physics called a pump probe laser system, which is essentially a two laser system. The pump laser is responsible for eliciting a change in a material, essentially shifting the physics that's happening in it. In this case, it's gonna be the ITO material, shifting from transparent or glass-like to reflective or mirror-like. And the probe laser is then responsible for, as the name kind of implies, probing the physics that's happening there, essentially seeing what's going on in that system. Both of these lasers were aligned pointing at the ITO material at slightly different angles. The pump laser was sent in, pulsed to deliver short bursts of light to the ITO, changing it from transparent to reflective. These pulses are about 2.3 picoseconds apart, which is about a trillion times faster, a trillion times faster than the blink of an eye. This causes the longer duration probe laser incident on that ITO to reflect back through two little time slits or windows in time. The interesting thing happens though when these pulses reach the measurement device 
and reveal their signal in the data. The data that is kept secure by today's sponsor, NordVPN. I've mentioned this before that in my time outside of YouTube, I help scientists that have breakthrough technologies, turn those technologies into startup companies and products that can get into the hands of people that need them. As a result, on my devices, I have a lot of sensitive and privileged information that otherwise I don't want hackers getting access to. As a result, I turn to today's sponsors, NordVPN, to keep my data safe. In just a single click, NordVPN servers can protect my data from bad actors lurking across the web, even when I'm not home. NordVPN superfast servers encrypt your data and hide your IP address on up to six devices. Another one of the many features that gives me peace of mind is the dark web monitor that will give me a heads up to change my passwords if they get leaked online. I genuinely think this is actually a real must have in today's world. So if you are interested, go to the link here to get a two year plan plus four months free with a huge discount. Plus, it's totally risk-free with 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support. It's one of those services that I know I would regret not using if my data was ever stolen. Thank you, NordVPN, for helping us stay safe. Now, back to the video. So what do we see out of this experiment? When the pulses of light arrive at the detector, the detector breaks the signal apart into the frequencies or colors that make up the incoming light, like through a prism. Taking a look at this frequency spectrum of the time slits versus the spatial spectrum of the distance slits, which is a shockingly hard sentence to say, we see a huge amount of similarity between spatial data and time data. As we look at the arriving pulse in the frequency spectrum, both pulses have a central carrier frequency, the frequency that went in or the color that went into the system, but they have many additional frequencies, essentially many additional colors that come out. But not only that, it seems like you've gotten some colors more than others. Pretty strange, how has this happened? I turned to the lead researcher, Ricardo Sapienza, to understand a bit more about what is actually happening here. So in some, in plasma physics, this is called a photon acceleration. So, the, so the light is, is in, interacting with the medium. And then while it's interacting, the material is changing quickly. It's a bit like the light has been stretched uh, because the, the frequency depends on the refractive index or the, the optical property of the material. And so if you're changing it very quickly while light is in, entering, you are basically, it's like a, having a spring and, a, and stretching it. The, the light is interacting with the material that is changing. So it, it, it's, it's a stretched in frequency. This is kind of confusing to understand, but it's really the reflection change in the material that is responsible for the color creation of these pulses. The research team found that even if they only put a single pulse into the experiment, they got a broadening of the colors out of the experiment. What they didn't, however, see in this process was the interference pattern that was overlaid on top of these additional colors. So there's actually two phenomena going on here. This is the reason why we do create this stretch. So we have done an experiment first with a single slit and, and we, we only saw a stretch. We don't, we don't see the interference. Um, but then when you when you have two of them, so then each of them will broaden the frequency, but then the, the, the interference comes from the fact that in a quantum picture, the photon can choose to be reflected by the first or the second. Light travels all possible paths at the same time, and then you just interfere them all. You can design a system that such that for a specific frequency, the phase exactly cancel out the intensity. So the two waves will arrive at the detector and the probability will be zero. Now, here I can visualize the photon in the spatial double slit going through all possible paths to interfere with itself and produce an interference pattern. What's really hard to get your head around, however, is that this is also the correct way of thinking about the double slit in time. The photon could be passing through either of the time slits. It's fascinatingly weird. We know this is true because just like if we change the distance between the slits in the spatial example, this changes the interference pattern. When Sapienza changed the time between the time slits, the exact same thing happened to the frequency interference pattern. Maybe, however, you're feeling slightly more skeptical about this experiment. You might have already been saying to yourself, hang on, did we just put in a bunch of work to get two pulses of light 2.3 picoseconds apart, but we actually did that entire process using two pulses of light 2.3 picoseconds apart, what is this tax money being used for? What are we actually doing here? Well, yes and no. 
In the spatial example, remember, of that double slit experiment, we said that the narrowness of the slits is incredibly important to get well-resolved bright and dark fringes. Otherwise, the slits act essentially like multiple wave points and you get a blurry interference pattern at the other side. The research team is doing something very similar here, but in time. Those pump pulses trigger a reflection change in the material, giving a very definite start time for the pump pulse to be redirected. Sharpness in space looks like a narrow slit, but sharpness in time looks like this, a fast transition. This sharpness is the reason why the interference bands are visible. The thing that has the research team the most excited about this experiment is how well resolved those fringes actually are. In fact, when they measured the transition speed of the ITO, they found that it took less than 10 femtoseconds, which is 10 millionth of a billionth of a second, to change from transparent to reflective. The researchers believe that this sort of time-varying metamaterial could have several actually quite useful applications later down the line. Could be things like fast optical switching for signal processing or reconfigurable components for things like optical computers, which would enable actually processing information using light rather than just transporting information using light, which is what we do nowadays with things like optical fibers. We might actually be able to build computers and do computing on a beam of light at some point in the future. However, obviously at the moment, these incredibly intense pulses of ultra fast laser light being used to create temporal double slits is hugely impractical to do anything at the moment with. But it is these kind of breakthroughs in this sort of fundamental physics domain that often unlocks entirely new technologies. Whether it's things like semiconductors for computer chips, or entanglement for quantum computers, how might this change the face of technology? For the time being, we just need to wait and see. If you liked this video, check out this other video I did on some physicists that believe the universe may be able to communicate with its younger self, and that that might somehow be less confusing of an explanation for how the universe works than our current understanding of quantum mechanics. Check it out, and as always, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.